Hello everyone, so today we have a very special guest on our channel. We have Shetit. So Shetit, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Shetit and I'm currently third year undergrad at JC Bose University and I'm doing computing programming for 1.5 years now. And you might know me, some of you might know me as Sinister on Code Forces or Code Chef. So I am candidate master on Code, uh, code Forces and six star until this uh, rating blender on Code Chef. <laughs> so yeah, this is all. Yeah, so Shetit recently wrote a blog about how to improve in computer programming as a lower rated person. So let's talk about that Shetit. Like what according to you is the reason? We see a lot of people who are stuck at newbie level, who are stuck at pupil level and even after a year, two year of training, they're not able to get a part out of that barrier, that newbie barrier, that pupil barrier. So what do you think is the reason for that? Okay. Uh, so like uh, whenever new people come to code forces, hmm. they see that uh, the problems are rated 800, 900 and uh, the problems are rated based on a number, right? Yeah. So when they start practicing out, most of them, uh, obviously they will start from 800, hmm. but they keep on practicing 800s only. Hmm. Okay. And while they are getting that, uh, like dopamine rush, yeah, yeah. because they are able to solve that problem. Yeah, they keep they on solving that Some of them might, uh, make goals. Like, uh, I have to solve all the 800 problems and I will solve all the 900 problems and I will like complete the problem set. Okay. <laughs> but that is not possible. And yeah. that is just absolute waste of time. Like majority of uh, newbie or pupil profiles I see that will look like the same profile I have mentioned in this blog. Hmm. Okay. Uh, if you, if it doesn't matter, I would like to share my screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. So the majority of these profiles look, that, look like this only. They have given like 20, 30 contests. They also practice consistently, but they are in this region only. Either they are not able to go to that green region or they are stuck in the boundary region hmm. of gray and green. Yes. Right. And this is due to when you see the problem rating graph, yeah, right. You see that there are a lot of 800 problems. Mm. Some of them might have more than hundred problems of 800 only. Yeah, okay? yeah. But the thing is 800 problems are quite easy. Okay. Yes. They are not going to teach you anything. Okay. And obviously any rating range, uh, will become redundant after some time, mm. because obviously after doing like 40, 50 problems, you will be used to the tricks, tips and tricks used in those problems. So after that particular threshold, what will happen? Mostly it will be like, you will be able to solve that by your own. Hmm. Okay. And the thing is while doing the practice, yeah. uh, this thing I forgot while doing the practice, if you are able to solve that thing comfortably, hmm. then your practice is not good. If yeah. you are struggling in your practice, if you are facing yes. hardships, mm -hmm. okay. The problem is like being a tougher for you. Okay. Yes. And when you read the editorial, you see, uh, you also try finding something like difficulty to understand, hmm. like. When you are struggling, that is completely fine. But when you are not struggling in doing during practice in competitive programming or anything, then it means you are not practicing good enough. Yeah. Right. Correct. So don't be uh, sad if you are facing problem or hardship mm -hmm. in facing new rating problems, because then only you are going to learn. If you just uh, try to be in your comfort zone, you are not going to learn anything. So the first thing is try to practice in such a way that you don't feel comfort. Mm -hmm. Right. If you are feeling comfort in that rating zone, it's time to level up. Yeah. Okay. So this is the first thing that majority of such people are doing. They yeah. are constantly solving the same set of problems that is either 800, 900. Okay. And they are not increasing their threshold. Yes. If you see if this person had 50 less problems of 800 and went through 1200 and 1300 more, the range will increase. Okay. Hmm. And during practice, you will, you will always have to make this goal that you have to increase your range. Yeah. You don't have to, uh, like increase your count of particular level. You want to reach to the hmm. far and far level. I if currently know. you are practicing 1200, your goal should be to reach 1500, 1600. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Not like you just skip the levels, but uh, like doing particular number of problems. Hmm. And I generally suggest that 40 to 50 problems are enough on yeah. particular level. Yes. If you are doing them and understanding the gist of the, those problems. Hmm. Okay. So yeah, this was it regarding the, what, why beginners are, uh, stuck on that particular rating range. Yes. So like you said, these are the mistakes that people make on newbie and pupil level. So what advice would you give? So suppose a newbie comes to you and says that I want to improve my rating. So he will ask you questions like what yep. to learn, where to learn. So what advice would you give? How can someone from a newbie level improve to go on to a higher yeah, level? Yeah, I can tell you the practice strategy, which I followed. Mm -hmm. uh, when first time I came to code forces, I had my mindset because I also saw some similar kind of video, which suggested that this is the 
common mistake people keep on doing yeah. and actually people are currently doing that <laughs> that till now as well people yeah. do the same mistake yeah. that is solving lot of easy problems so before i came to code forces i was clear about this thing so i didn't made this mistake i just uh, jumped into the problem set mm-hmm. and i started pro- uh, solving problems from 800 then i solved 40 or 45 something then i moved to 900 then 1000 and so on okay obviously when uh, you just switch to new level hmm. you will not solve it on your own yeah mostly like until 1600 or 1700 whenever i jump to a new rating now first 20 problems like very few out of first 20 problems i was able to solve by myself hmm. okay but when you are in practice it doesn't mean you have to solve it by your own so before we start with the rest of the video let me tell you about this amazing platform called cryo so cryo is a website where you can learn new skills and get your dream placement so they have placement courses they have a course on full stack development and they have a course on back end development and they have the best content that is out there so they have a course of fellowship program in software development where they teach you software development skills in either back end development or full stack development so if you are someone who's working in a company and you want to upscale yourself you want to join a better company or you want to join a fang company a higher paying company then you can take this course and they also have a free trial which is the best thing so even if you're not sure about the content of this course you can book your free trial and you can see for yourself the content that they have and apart from that they also have a separate full stack web development course and a back end web development course where you'll be working on real time live projects with working professionals so it'll be just like working in a company you'll gain some real life experience by working with these professionals and you'll be able to add these projects to your resume and build your portfolio so you can definitely check these courses out and if you are someone who wants a good placement who wants to join a good company then this is something that i would definitely recommend so go click the link in the description and book your free trial now yeah because if you are able to solve by your own then there is no way of practice mm, right no go of practice correct so you will need to look at editorials you will need to learn those tricks mm. right because if you are not able to uh, do it on your own there are stuff to be learned from it right yeah. so keep on learning from that okay and as you do 40 45 problems of each rating level you will constantly see new tricks hmm. which are related to your level hmm. for example if you are solving 800 900 problems then you might uh, see simple tricks like prefix sum or array rotation or something like that hmm. right when you grow you will at 1300 1400 you will come across binary search then at that particular moment of time you can explore that what does this thing mean hmm. right whenever you open the editorial you see that new word you came through yeah, yeah. you came across binary search what is that you can search on google you can search hmm. on youtube okay you will find plenty of resources okay then you solve that problem okay then you can uh, uh, like go through go through more hmm. videos of that algorithm yeah. you can solve more problems this is the way how i stumbled upon new uh, oh, topics hmm. okay and if you keep on going through this only eventually every topic will come into your place hmm. and if that is not coming it means you don't need it very much because if yeah. it is very rare you don't need it very much then there is no use if hmm. you are not using that right so this is one way but what else you can follow you can like if you have some resource if you have some guidance that these topics are going to be there hmm. so you can side by side doing a blind problem set what you can do you can start learning out algorithms hmm. right and for uh, for this purpose i rate or i distinguish two type of practices one is which will improve your critical thinking mm-hmm. that will test that yeah. whatever you know are you able to imply that or not okay basically contest does, does the same you can't discover or learn something new during the contest it will check only the things you already know are mm. you able to use it or not right this is how you will grow this you will grow this by solving the problem set blindly mm. not seeing any text not checking hints mm. and doing it blindly just checking out different approaches and trying them and proving them disapproving them so this will build your critical thinking mm. okay now the other very important part which many people like uh, aren't able to uh, like get in their initial journey hmm. okay uh, someone told them that you have to constantly solve the problem that is okay hmm. but sometimes how will you solve the problem if you have if you don't have that theoretical hmm. knowledge right yeah so learning algorithms is also important hmm. right so i distinguish this in the second type of practice where you learn new strategies yeah. you learn new algorithms you try to watch out uh, watch out new tutorials you try to solve some standard problems hmm. like if you are learning dp obviously you will be solving uh those knapsack hmm. coin sum and all that stuff problem set right? so those are quite important because that will teach you the algorithm how does that algorithm work right for this type of practice uh like you can choose 
any particular um, like resource like any uh, like uh, at at coder is there okay dp section is there hmm. and the best one currently is the cscs yeah okay every problem of cscs is very much educative okay whenever you learn an algorithm you want to try it on to code it you want to implement it you can go to cscs and find the most standard problem of it hmm. right then you can implement and try okay now the thing is when we learn the algorithm for the first time we can't get everything out of there hmm. that is quite obvious because we can get all of it only when you have we have used that for many times hmm. okay for example someone told you that how to drive a car and you just drive it once you will not become the expert right hmm. you will become expert only when you have used or you have dro drove it like 50 or 100 times so yeah. the thing is whenever you learn a new algorithm uh, you just have to master it okay and hmm. you cannot master it at one go what you have to do you just have to solve that standard problem hmm. you know how to apply that and save the code snippets or nodes or whatever yeah. you want whatever you need to remember you think that i will forget this obviously if you learn a new algorithm try to save that code snippet in some files or something okay now you have to go back to your critical problem uh, critical problems solving mm -hmm. right there you will stumble across problems blindly mm -hmm. and the first thing you should be able to recognize mm -hmm. okay let's say i uh, 15 days back i learned an algorithm called dfs or bfs and then then i uh, like i solved a problem of counting components or something like mm -hmm. that then I stumbled across a problem related to tree, which was using a very similar concept. Hmm. So at that particular moment of time, I should be able to recognize that, hmm. that this is related to that algorithm. It is yeah. not important that I should be able to completely solve it hmm. because I can, for that, I can look back to that code, right? But the main thing you should try when you are learning the algorithm for first, you should be able to recognize the problem. Hmm. And what problem is this solving? Hmm. If you are able to recognize that what problem it is solving, and then when you naturally stumble across mm. that problem then you can come back to this mm. and you can recall this right you can revise this you can recall this and you can use that there so this way what will happen you will remember for much longer time because this way you are not memorizing the solution indeed you found the real naturally you found the problem mm. you stumbled across the problem and your mind was able to recall mm. that yeah this can be solved by that algorithm and there you applied it really the mm. real application took place right so in this way problems will uh, will be coming around you and you will be using that mm. and as you solve more and more problems five ten problems of our algorithm naturally it will get stuck in your mind mm. that for this problem we can use this thing okay so always try to balance out these two types of practices one is keep on learning new topics mm. okay but you can do like each week you can uh, like make a goal i have to learn this algorithm uh, in this week this algorithm in this, in this week and do, during learning what you can do you can watch out videos you can read the stuff, whatever you want, and you have to solve uh, one, two, or three, four standard problems. Uh, obviously, every tutorial has some standard problems to like uh, test ourselves on. Yeah. Okay. You solve those problems. Hmm. You save your code snippets because you cannot remember all the code, hmm. and you can't remember it until you do it like quite a few times. Okay. Yeah. So you do not have to remember that, but you have to recognize the pattern hmm. that what is the problem this is solving, and it doesn't matter how it is solving because when you again stumble across this problem you can recollect that right mm. so this is the thing then you can come back to your critical problem section and you can keep on solving now what will happen you will come across those problems and you mm. will apply your mind yeah. so these two practices complement each other mm. right and you just have to balance them out in this way you will keep on learning new things mm. and you will keep on uh, you will be in the practice to use those things mm. because if you keep on learning things you are not able to apply it naturally when you yeah. stumble across it unknowingly, blindly. Then also there is no use of learning new things. And if you are only solving problems, your theoretical game is not strong. Mm. You are not going to discover new algorithms on your own, which scientists discovered <laughs> like years ago, yeah. right? We can't dis like basic algorithms mm. we can discover, but basically uh, more detailed algorithms we need to first study about, mm. right? So these two practices must be there should be a good balance, and that is what I did initially mm. when I was uh, like. Uh, in after two three months into my journey, I keep on discovering new, new topics. Whenever I see that we yeah, have binary search and this uh, number theory topics and this this this, I try to cover them, but I didn't try to like at that particular moment. I just knew yeah this is this thing. I get the intro. I save the code snippets for future. Mm. And whenever I just keep on getting that same problem, I got expertise on them. Mm. This is my strategy.
So I guess that pretty much covers everything about computer programming and how to improve in it being a newbie or a pupil. So thank you Shitesh for coming on my channel and sharing such invaluable tips and great advice for the people that are watching. I'll also give a link to the blog that I was talking about uh, in the description. He has written a very detailed blog about the same thing, how you can improve if you're a newbie or pupil. So definitely go check the blog out and go give it a put. So again, thank you Shitesh for coming on my channel and sharing these tips with me and my subscribers. Yeah, you're welcome. That was a nice talk.